Hello Algebra 1, we're going to be uh, doing your math notes. This is for systems of equations. Remember, you can use this on the final coming up. You're also going to be putting in this into Canvas if you're in my class. And you'll notice it's front and back, and each side has the methods that we've been learning about. So the first one we've been learning about is equal value. Now, the hardest part about um, looking at systems is when do you use which method? So how do you know what method to use? And this is the kind of notes that I want you guys to be taking. So yes, write this out. You'll know to use equal value when both equations, both equations are in y equals mx plus b form. That's the clue for you. If both of them are in y equals mx plus b form, then equal value is a great method to use. So let's solve this one. All right, so I'm going to, equal value means you're going to set both equations equal to each other. Okay, and now um, I'm going to write out each step that I'm doing. I don't like fractions, so I'm going to clear the fractions. And here's what you do when you clear fractions. This is all, okay, based on the denominator of 4. So I'm going to multiply every term by 4. This is known as clearing the fractions. And I'm going to make a little note up here. That's what I was doing, okay? Clear the fractions. So, so when I clear fractions, I get 3 times 12 is going to be, or 3 times 4 is 12 divided by 4, that gives us 3x. 4 times 4 is 16 equals those cancel out. Look at this. Negative 5 times 4 is negative 20. But divide by 4, you're back at negative 5. Those 4's clear away. And we're left at negative 16. Okay, so my goal now is I have to, okay, I have to continue to solve for x. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add 5x to each side. So I'm going to add 5x, do this, I am not sure guys what is wrong with my board here. So when I add 5x to each side, I get 8x plus 16 equals negative 16. Okay? Again, I'm trying to get all of my numbers on one side, so I'm going to subtract 16 here, and I'm going to get 8x equals negative 32. So when I divide by 8, I'm going to get x equals negative 4. Now remember, if you are solving for a systems and you get down to this point where you're like, oh, I'm going to get x equals negative 4, okay, well, be aware, you're going to have to continue the problem. You can't just stop and be like, that's close enough. So I'm going to zoom back out here, guys. And we're going to bring this part down just a little. Okay. 
All right, I'm going to clear this part off. You guys aren't going to need to clear all that part off. But here's the second part. You need to now find y. It's very important that you find y because it's a coordinate point. So it doesn't matter. Pick one of those equations. Okay, you can pick the first one, second one. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to pick the first one. So I know I have y equals 3 fourths times x plus 4. Well, what did we get for x? Well, we got negative 4. I'm plugging that negative 4 in. So when I look at this now, what I'm seeing here is that 3 times negative 4 is negative 12 divided by 4, which just means those 4's go away, and you're left with y equals 3 plus 4. Sorry, and it'll be negative. Don't forget that negative. It'll be negative 3 plus 4, and you get y equals negative 1. But again, you're trying to prepare for a final, so you're looking at how is your answer. Well, your answer is always in a coordinate point. So your answer is going to be negative 4, negative 1. Okay, remember, this guy is going to always be x and y. So your answer, answer is always a coordinate point. Answer is always a coordinate point, okay? All right, let's take a look at our next method. And our next method is known as substitution. And when you were doing the lesson, you found that not all methods are the most efficient. And so what makes the substitution method better, or maybe not better, but better for that particular problem? Okay, so substitution. We now have substitution. And I'm going to try to zoom in here, guys, just a little. Substitution happens, and again, yes, I want you to write this out. This, remember, this is the important part. Here is our system, but our, this is when only one equation, how do you know when to use substitution? Well, when one equation is in y equals mx plus b form. Okay. That's what it looks like. So only one equation is in y equals mx plus b form. That's when you know to use this particular method. Okay, so how do we look at this one? I'm going to rewrite it. So I get x plus y equals 3, and then I get y equals 3x plus 11. Well, in substitution, you are looking for what can you substitute in. And I see that y equals this thing called 3x plus 11 and I'm going to substitute it right in there. Okay. So now what happens is I'm left with x plus y equals 3. And you'll see that I always circle what I'm going to substitute in and I draw an arrow to where I'm substituting it in. So this becomes 3x This is going to be 3x plus 11 right in the parentheses. Okay, so what, how do we solve this now? Well, we solve it like we normally do. We have x plus 3x plus 11 equals 3. So I'm going to combine my like terms. I have this x and I have this plus 3x. Those are like terms. So my next thing becomes 4x plus 11 equals 3. Okay, there it is. There's my 4x plus 11 equals to 3. Okay, now I have to get rid of the 11, so I'm going to move it to the other side. And I get 4x 
equals, now this is going to be, remember it's negative, it'll be negative 8. Okay, so when I divide by 4, I'm left with x equals negative 2. All right, again, don't forget about your y. I'm going to erase here. You guys just keep going. Same problem, same page. We're just going to use the bottom part here. Okay. All right, so don't forget, now you're going to solve for y. I'm going to pick the first or the second equation because I know it's 3. I'm going to pick this top equation or the one that says y equals. So it'll be y equals 3x plus 11. Well, now I know what to substitute in okay? because I know that x is negative 2. Well, how do I solve that? I distribute that 3. I get a negative 6 plus 11, which means y equals 5. Again, your answer will always need to be a coordinate point. So I'm going to get negative 2, 5 is my final answer. Now you can go back and check those. You can plug those in like we've been doing in class. Plug it in for the x and the y. See if it solves both. Always check your answers. All right, go ahead and turn your notes over. And you should see the last two methods. We have elimination method, and then we have word problems, everybody's favorite. All right, so elimination method. The elimination method is my favorite method, and I will turn everything I can into elimination. All right, so why? Well, it's just the method that I prefer. But how do you know when it's time to use elimination? Well, you know it's time because both equations are not in y equals mx plus b form. That's how you know. If both of them are saying like something strange, not in y equals mx plus b, well, that's when you're going to use the elimination method. All right, so let's take a look at the solution here. Well, my solution, I'm going to take negative 2x plus y equals negative 7, and I'm going to have 3x minus 4y equals 8. And remember, elimination method, well, like all of them, you're trying to eliminate a variable. So which variable am I going to try to get rid of? I'm going to try to get rid of the y's. So I'm looking at this top equation. I'm thinking, well, I have a positive 1y, but down here I have, a po I have a negative 4y. So what do I need to multiply the top equation by to make sure that that's a positive 4y? Well, I have to multiply that by 4. Okay. You must multiply the top equation by 4. So here's what happens. You're going to get 4 times a negative 2 is a negative 8x. 4 times y is positive 4y. Please don't forget this. You have to also multiply out there. 4 times a negative 7 is a negative 28. Now, I didn't do anything to the bottom equation, so it's just 3x minus 4y equals 8. Now what we're going to do is we add those two equations together. Okay? That's all we're doing is we're just going to add those two equations together now. All right, so what happens when we add them together? Well, negative 8 plus 3x is a negative 5x. Oh, look at what happens here. They're eliminated. Negative 28 minus, or negative 28 plus 8 gives us a negative 20. All right, well, what happens next? You're going to divide by negative 5. And you're going to be left with x equals 4. All right, you guys know the rest of the routine. Go back and solve for y. This is the maybe not best part about elimination. Solving for y is a little bit harder. 
Okay, so pick one of those equations. I'm going to pick the second equation only because it has maybe, um, or the first equation has a little bit less numbers. And when you pick, so when you solve, when you go back and you solve for y, you have to make sure you go back to the original. So I'm going to pick this, 2x plus y equals negative 7. Okay, I'm going to go back and just pick that one. Well, now I know I have negative 2 times x plus y equals negative 7. Well, here we go. What was y? Or what was x? It was 4. Now I just do the math. So I get negative 8 plus y equals negative 7. I add 8. I'm going to add 8 to each side. And I'm left with y equals 1. Okay. Always, always, always please put your points into a coordinate point. So you should get 4, 1. That is it for all of the methods, the algebraic methods. Now remember, you can use your graphing method, you can use your table method, but that's it for our algebraic methods. But we wanted to make sure you guys remember, some, have some notes about how to solve word problems. And so our word problems, they are tough, okay? So we want Kenny to buy, wants, he wants to buy Christmas gifts for 18 members of the Key Club. He has, he wants to buy t-shirts and sweatshirts but he only has $180 to spend. So how much should he spend, or how many t-shirts and how many sweatshirts should he buy? So first thing you have to do is you have to set your variables. And your variables, it doesn't matter, okay, what you set, but I'm gonna let x equal number of t-shirts he has to buy. I'm going to rewrite that, guys. So number of t-shirts. And we're going to let y equal the number of sweatshirts. And now I have to go back and I have to now look at my equations. And this is where colored pencils are come in really handy. So I know that he has a total of 18 members. And I'm going to highlight that because that represents my first equation. Well, how do you total something? Well, the way you total something is you add. So I'm going to take however many X's. If I had eight t-shirts, that means I would have 10 sweatshirts totaling my 18 members. I don't know how many members or how many X's and Y's I'm going to buy, but I know if I put them together, I have 18. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at the money. And here's how I always know how to, this is how I know how to make my equations. I look for all of the correct, um, or all of the same units. So I know that t-shirts are $9, sweatshirts are 15, and he only has 180 to spend. So I know that that is my second equation. So, so t-shirts, that's my x. I'm going to, I know I have, I have nine of those. So I have nine t-shirts. And I can spend $15 for every sweatshirt, but I only together, I only have together $180. There it is. There are my two equations. And now you have to decide on a method to solve these equations. Well, I look at them. Both of them are, in, are not in y equals mx plus b. So I come back over here to elimination. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to use the elimination method. Okay, so how am I going to use elimination now? 
Well, I know they're both not in y equals mx plus b, so I'm going to have to get rid of probably that y. So how do I do that? So I know I have x plus y equals 18, and I have 9x plus 15y equals 180. So I'm going to multiply this. I want to get rid of my y's, okay? So how do I make this a negative 15? Well, I have to multiply everything. by a negative 15. So when I do that, I have to multiply here. And I get a negative 15x. Here, I get a negative 15y equals 18 times 15. I get a negative 270. Now, I didn't do anything to this bottom number, or this bottom equation, so I just rewrite it. And now I'm just doing the math. Okay, so here I get 15. This is going to give me a negative 6. When I add those, those cancel out. And now I'm left with 270 negative plus... 180, you get a negative 90. Okay. I'm going to come back up here, guys, just so you can see. I'm kind of running out of room over here. So you're going to get a negative 6x equals 90. I'm going to divide by negative 6, and I'm going to get x equals 15. So there's that work. x equals negative 15. Well, what do you have to do next? Exactly. Find your y. I knew you guys knew that. So now you're going to find y. Again, it doesn't matter which one you plug it into. I'm going to plug it into that very first one because that's pretty nice. So I'm going to get 15 or x plus y equals 18. I don't have to multiply by 9 and 15. That's why I chose it. So I'm going to subtract 15 from each side. And you're left with y equals 3. Now, unlike the other problems, you have to really stop and think about what this means. Because on the question, it asks how many t-shirts and how many sweatshirts should you buy? And we're going to be expecting an answer like that. So you, we know that your answer right now is x is 15 and y is 3. But what does that mean? Well, what did we let the x equal and what did we let the y equal? So here's what kind of we're looking for. So this is going to be what, how you write your answer. You're buying 15 t-shirts, because x, we said, let x represent t-shirts, and three sweatshirts. Now, the hard part for Kenny is, who's he going to uh, give his sweatshirts to? All right. Thank you, Algebra 1. Remember, you can use these notes on your final, and you will be able to... You will eventually be putting this into Canvas, so make sure your notes are nice and neat and colored, um, color-coded for maximum points. Study hard for that final.